This is Radio Now 95.3 FM. Come for the news, stay for informed conversations. Reactions continue to trail the violence in Okwama community of Delta State. The Human Rights, the Human Rights Writers Association, Huriwa, has questioned the use of the military in peacekeeping operations in the community and the subsequent tragedy that occurred where we saw a raising of houses and displacement of people. Huriwa says that the murder of soldiers in Okwama shows a gap in military and civilian relations. Our guest this morning is a national coordinator of Huriwa, Mr. Emmanuel Oubike. Uh, pardon me, Oubiko. Hello, Mr. Oubiko. Welcome to the conversation. Yes, yeah, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, can you expand a bit more on this point Huriwa has made that the murder of these soldiers shows a gap between military and civilian opera- uh, relations? Oh, yes. There are for quite some time, the military institutions, the hierarchy, of those that institutions haven't done a lot to bridge the gap, the conversation between uh, civilians and uh, the military. Yeah, because um, uh, Nigerians are yet to come to terms. A lot of Nigerians are yet to come to terms that the military as an institution is a strategic component of the constitutional democracy that we run. Uh, a lot of people still view the military with that kind of uh, exception of when the military violently took over uh, political administration in the country and stayed on in power for a very long period of time uh, and uh, flagrantly violated. In fact, they even abolished the military, abolished the, uh, the legal statute that. Uh, uh, that, that was in use to govern the country, the constitution. So, even though it's been all that been the one year since democracy returned to Nigeria, a lot of Nigerians, the civilians, are not very much conversant with how to actually uh, interface with the military, mm. and the, the bulk of the responsibilities in trying to explain the role that the military play, uh, you know, within the society to, to stabilize the society and to secure the territorial integrity of Nigeria, to be in the hands of the, the, the military hierarchy, essentially. And there are other institutions that have been set in place in the country that, that have done a lot of work, good work, trying to uh, broaden the scope of conversations and dialogues between the military and the and, and the civilians. Uh, third bodies like the National Human Rights Commission, so many non-governmental organizations, PSOs, uh, that have been in existence in this country have done quite a lot to try to try to initiate uh, continuous uh, you know, conversations. Right. And, um, so, we call, for yeah. the sake of clarity, right, um, it seems like your call is focused on, uh, and just what you're saying here, your call is focused very largely on just the existing relationships, whether or not it's a case where the military should be involved in what is civil matters or military matters, whatever the case may be. And, and exactly. I'm, I'm pointing this yeah. out because. Um, many analysts, experts have said that the military shouldn't have been called into that situation in the first place. So, Huriwa is speaking beyond calling the military into civil matters. Is that is that the case? Yeah, that is the case. That is the case. Uh, the responsibility to explain to Nigerians why the military got involved in that uh, crisis, you know, should fall squarely in the hands of the hierarchy of the military. But they have not done that. They haven't done that. And uh, not a lot of uh, sensitization is done to make Nigerians understand that, that, that there are conflicts that could arise that those who are in charge of national security may deem it appropriate to draft uh, any of those uh, segments of the national security agencies, either the military, or either the DSS, the police. But primarily, the tax of law enforcement Falls quelling the Nigerian police force. But we have to admit also that 
a lot of uh, conflicts do happen, but the police most times find it a little bit difficult to control and to check. And uh, uh, that this is the reason why uh, if the military is going to deploy their operatives, their agents to communities for either peacekeeping operations or for entire security operations or for whatever, whatever kind of operation, mm. there's a need to let the people know about the presence of the military amongst them because the military is not actually supposed to be uh, seen every other place, in every other place in the country, because, uh, except when there is the need for their intervention. If the, the police, the police institution, the institution is unable to confront such law and other, uh, you know, developments, then you can now bring in the, the, the military. Well, there's the need for continual kind of dialogue, continual kind of, uh, you know, conversation on the part of the military trying to extend themselves. Mr. Ongubiko, you, 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 you are making a very um, salient point in talking about how there needs to be a continuous conversation between um, you know, the authorities and Nigerians. But I, I wonder if the military would be interested in reviewing their, let's call it their method of operation, especially as regards communications. And I'm asking this because in this entire conversation, the military has not um, addressed the burning of the community beyond denying or beyond stating that they will not engage in reprisal acts but the entire uh, conversation has been you know just sort of just hitting away yes yeah that that is exactly what we observe and said is the only doubt uh we we need to really fix those kind of uh yearning doubts those kind of doubts those kind of mutual recrimination and mutual suspicions on the part of the the either the civilians or the military looking at the civilians as if the civilians are different, but they're, well, they're not different. The military is a part of is a part of the country. Is a part of us, a part of the civilians. The military is just like it's just a job. It's just a kind of uh, uh, well, a profession of some of our people, some of our brothers and sisters that have decided that they want to join that particular career for some time to to help to secure the territorial integrity of Nigeria. So when anybody in Nigeria joins the military, they should not be that kind of mutual suspicion that they, they are they, they, they are there and we are here. No, we're all the same. We're all the same, actually. So there has to be continual, uh, you know, you know, kind of um, uh, conversations between between uh, both segments of the society, so that we understand the role that the military is supposed to play to uh, maintain law and order, especially when the police is lacking in that particular responsibility. Because the, the basic responsibility of the police, they are the first responders when it comes to law and other matter. When there is a breakdown or a breach of security in any part of the country, the first responders, the first uh, people who are even supposed to prevent those things from happening. Because the work of the police is not to try to uh, catch criminals, but to even stop crimes from happening. That should be the role of the police. That's why they need a lot of intelligence. But the police in Nigeria is lacking in some of those uh, functions. So because of those kind of um, um, inadequacies on the part of the policing institution, that's why you find a lot, a lot of times you see a lot of military deployments going on all over the country. If the police, uh, because the police has proven incapable of tackling and confronting those issues that bother us, on national security. Of course. Well, Mr. Ongubiko, would like to thank you very much for speaking with us uh, this morning. Our guest on the conversation, Emmanuel Ongubiko, is the National Coordinator of the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria. And he joined us to speak on to expand on Huriwa's position that the military needs to engage in better relations with the civilian population of Nigeria, especially in the wake of the unfortunate murder of soldiers in Delta State last week. We ask that you stay tuned to your Beyond the News Station. The conversation continues in just a moment with Brands Now. This is Radio Now 95.3 FM. Come for the news, stay for informed conversations.